Civic Theater. We are so glad you're here. How many of you have ever been to the theater? No, not a movie, but a place with the stage where real life people perform. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to have a ticket to get into the theater. How many of you brought your tickets? Well, if you forgot them or you don't have one, no problem. We're going to head over to the box office to buy a ticket so we can see the show. So, here we are at the box office and this is the ticket window. I'm going to take my penny to go purchase my ticket for the show. Hi, Miss Barb. Good morning, Miss Holly. I would like one ticket to the show, please. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. I've got my ticket. It's time to see the show. We have our ticket. It's time to go into the lobby. Come on. Welcome to the Tarkington lobby. This is where we wait until that house opens. While you're waiting, make sure you have your ticket in your hand. And there are two things you're going to want to look at closely. There will be a letter and a number on your ticket, and that is important to remember. Oh my, the house is open. That means it is time to go into the theater. Now that the house is open, it's time to go into the theater. Come on, let's go. We even have special railings if someone needs help walking down the ramp. Come follow me. How do you know it's row H? Because right here on the end, this is row H, and this is 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, and 106. Here is your seat. I found my seat. Yay, it's a great one. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, welcome to the theater. You're here. The show's getting ready to start. You're sitting in the house, which is this area where the seats are, and you are the audience. The action is getting ready to take place on the stage. So when you come to the theater, all you're coming to see is a story. A story like you might hear at school or maybe before you go to bed at night. Story time, right? But here at the theater, we use a lot of fancy things to help tell our story. The first thing is something called an actor. Do you know what is an actor? It's a person just like me, with a voice and a body who can use those instruments to help tell the story. And the actors go on the stage while the audience stays in the house, okay? Second thing is something called scenery. Can you say scenery? Good. Scenery is something that goes onto the stage that again is just helping to tell our story. So if you walk in and you look on the stage and you see trees, what does that tell you about the story? It probably tells you that you're gonna be outdoors, that the story is taking place outdoors, right? Because trees grow outdoors for the most part. Also, maybe it tells you that the story is gonna take place in a forest, right? So it already is setting a mood and telling you a lot of stuff before anybody has even spoken a word. So scenery. Very important. The next most important thing is something called lighting. Lighting, right? Like we have lights. And when you're in the theater, there's no windows. So we have to turn lights on so you can see what's going on. When the play is ready to start, we usually turn off the house lights like this and turn on the stage lights. Fancy, right? And now we can see what's going on on the stage. And if you're at the play, the lights are helping us tell mood. They're helping us uh, see where to focus our attention. All the things that lights can do for the play. The next thing is something that we use called sound. What is sound? Sound is something we hear, right? You hear with your ears. And that can be the sound of the actor's voice. It could be the sound of the orchestra if it's a musical and there's an orchestra in the orchestra pit. It can be music that's playing. It can also be sound effects. So let's go to the sound board and check out some sound effects. So here we are at the back of the house at the sound booth. The sound booth is the sound board. And look, 
There's the sound designer. That's Michael. He's going to share with us some sound effects that we use in the plays that we produce here at the theater. So what are some examples, Michael? So uh, a lot of times we use birds. We use a lot of birds. And oh. It, it establishes where we are. So right. So outside. when I talked about the trees, if you see trees on the stage, you're in the forest. Well, guess what? Now you really know you're in a forest because you hear birds chirping. Excellent. What else? Another thing that we use a lot of times because it likes it, something's happening outside. Mm -hmm. is... Oh, <laughs> there's a dog. Dog bark. Now, do you think we have a dog on the stage? Not this time. Sometimes we do, but this is a way for us to tell you that there are dogs in the story just by hearing the sound of a dog barking. What else? Also, we do this a lot of the time. <laughs> oh, there's the train. I gotta run. <laughs> Don't want to miss the train. Yeah, again, do you think we're going to bring a whole train onto the stage? Probably not. Sometimes that can be a really cool effect, but we do it really simply by just using a sound effect that makes your brain know, hey, there's a train in the story. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. The next thing we talk about when talking about elements in the theater that help us tell our story are what an actor wears. Do you know what that's called, the clothes that an actor wears? That's right, costumes. When do you wear a costume? Halloween? Yeah, when you dress up to be somebody that you're not. Well, that's exactly what an actor does. They're dressing up to be someone they're not. And costumes can tell us a lot about the person, a lot about the story. They can tell us if a person lives in the city or in the country, a lot of things about what a person is by wearing, just by seeing their costumes. And costumes can include hats, wigs, shoes, you know, all the things that help make a costume. And we have people here at the theater who actually build the costumes. It's a real job. <laughs> in our costume shop, our um, costume designer and their, her assistants are hard at work building costumes because you can't always just go down to the Target and buy what you need for the show. We have to actually tailor them for the actors and for the actual story. So costumes are a very important part of telling stories in the theater. The next thing, and the final thing, is something called props. Can you say props? Yes, props. Props is a short word for a bigger word, properties, okay? And props are the things an actor carries onto the stage with them, or maybe it might be something that's set on the stage that, again, just helps us tell a little bit about our story. For instance, if an actor walks on stage with a suitcase, that suitcase is their prop, and what does that tell you? It tells you that that actor, that character, is probably going on a journey, right? Or on a trip, maybe a vacation, right? So just by seeing that suitcase, which is the prop, that tells you what's going on in the story. But props can be anything. It can be your cell phone. It can be your bird cage that you carry with you. <laughs> it can be a lot of different things. And we've got some examples of props to look at right now. We're gonna go downstairs to the props cages. Follow me. Here's the green room. This is where the actors relax in between shows or maybe before or after the show when they're not on stage. The green room. Why is it called the green room? Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of stories about that. Howard is actually blue. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. And here we are in the basement of the theater where the props cages are. Why are they called cages? Well, if you look, there they are. <laughs> They're like big cages where we can store and keep our props secure. And we have so many, right? And there's all kinds of things. And again, props help tell our story in a very important way because if something isn't authentic, if it doesn't fit the time period of the story or the location or anything like that, it can throw the audience off. It doesn't look right. So props, we have to have things from all eras, right? So here's a lot of our sort of glassware and kitchen equipment and things like that. In this cage, we have plants. We have old telephones. Look at this. Do you even know what that is, kids? That's a telephone. Look at that. All right. In here, we have things like musical instruments and tennis rackets. Oh, and there's a shield from Africa. Okay. And then back here, Suitcases. Remember we talked about the suitcase, if an actor carries a suitcase on stage? Brooms, baskets, books, umbrellas, bags, canes, all kinds of things. 
Another thing that you find in the basement of our particular theater is the orchestra pit, and it's right through that door. And that's where the orchestra sits to play their instruments during a musical. Very exciting. And now we're going to go to the dressing rooms. Follow me. Now we're in the dressing room. The dressing room is the place where the actors get ready for the show. They get their makeup on in here, their costumes, and sometimes even a wig. But I'm going to show you two examples right now of some costumes that an actor might wear. Mr. Marty mentioned that costumes can tell us what time period the play takes place in. If it takes place either today or a long, long time ago. Here's an example of a dress that somebody might wear to a birthday party today, right? In today's world. However, would you wear this to a birthday party? Probably not. But if you were playing the witch in The Wizard of Oz and you needed to wear a black fancy dress and a big black hat, this would be a great example. I also mentioned sometimes actors wear wigs. Both boys and girls wear wigs in plays. Here's an example of a very fancy wig. Are you ready to see her? Ha <laughs> ha! Look at this wig! Isn't that crazy? It's so fun, has a big, big red feather on it. And um, so sometimes in a show, you have to look different, right? And so even Miss Holly with her short dark hair could wear this wig and become a different character on the stage. Pretty exciting, right? Welcome to the stage. You made it, right? Do you remember the house where the audience sits, where you were sitting? Let's check it out. Look at all of those seats. How many do you think there are? 100, 1,000? I'll tell you, there are 500 seats. Now imagine if every one of those seats had a person sitting in it and they were all staring at you and waiting to be entertained. How would you feel? Nervous, excited, happy? Actors feel all of those things. It's just part of the job. And I'll tell you, when those house lights go off and the stage lights come on, the audience can kind of disappear and you get into your own little world. So it's not as scary as you might think, but nerves are a good thing in the theater for actors. So back to the stage over here. When we're doing a play, there's a person in charge and that person is called the director. And the director has to be able to tell the actors how to move on the stage. And we call that blocking. I think we have an assistant here to help us today do that. Um, can we have our actor, please? Is that my cue? <laughs> that is your cue. Look everyone, it's Miss Holly from the Hi. lobby. <laughs> so, Miss Holly, if I were the director and you were the actor, mm -hmm. um, and I were to tell you, well, first of all, we need to talk about the directions on the stage. Yes, there we are do. permanent set spots, right? There are. So, if I'm facing the audience here, that means I'm facing downstage. That part of the stage is called downstage when you're toward the audience. When you go away from the audience that way, that's called upstage. Get it? down and up, they're opposites. And then if we want to go to that side of the stage, what hand am I using here? I'm using my right hand. If I'm facing the audience and using my right hand, that is stage right. So if I'm facing the audience and I use my left hand, what do you think that's called? Right, stage left. No, not right. Correct. Stage left, <laughs> Stage right? left. Stage right, oh, it upstage, downstage. It can be very confusing, but the way that we have these directions. Now, what if I turn around and I face Miss Holly, who is upstage, and I use my left hand, that side of the stage is still called stage right. It never changes. And that's how the director gets to tell the actors how to move, because things don't ever change. They're always the same. So if I say, Miss Holly, can you please go upstage left? She's gonna go. This is up. Upstage. And that is left. So she's going to upstage left. Excellent. What if I said, Miss Holly, can you please go downstage left? Let me think. Down is this way. That's correct. And this is the left side of the stage. Correct. So I'm going to cross downstage. Downstage left. left. And what if I said, Miss Holly, will you please come to center stage? I would say. Gladly. <laughs>
Join me, center. Excuse me, you're in my space. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ta-da! I'll go center right. I am now center stage. <laughs> All right. So that's how an actor knows how to move on the stage. And it's very simple for the director to tell them. Otherwise, they'd have to come up and really, like, physically move them around, which would be weird. Okay? So those are our stage directions. Yep. Now, the stage has a lot of other things to offer, okay, up here. There's a lot of other things going on that the audience never sees. For instance, what if we look up? If we look up, we can see way up into what is called the Fly Tower. And up in the Fly Tower, which is many stories high, we have things like lighting instruments. We have curtains. We can put scenery up there. Sometimes we put actors up there. So that is the fly tower part of the stage, okay? Coming back down to Earth, here we are. <laughs> now we're going to go backstage, and we're gonna go backstage left and check out some other things. Come along with us. So here we are, we're backstage. We're backstage left here at the Tarkington. And I wanted to show you this. What do you suppose this thing is? This large hanging instrument, right? Some people say, oh, that's a camera, like looks like a TV camera, but it really is a lighting instrument. So when we're looking on the stage and we talked about lighting, do you remember that? These are the things that create the light, okay? And they're big and they get hot and they're very, very bright because we need to be able to see an actor on stage even if you're sitting at the very back of the theater. So the bright lights, the big lights like this help us do that. So lighting instrument, very important. Another element of the backstage world at the theater is this. This is what we probably know as a curtain. You might look at that and say, oh, that's a curtain on stage. And it is, but it's a specific kind of curtain. It's something called a leg because it's sort of short this way and they frame the stage. There's another one on the other side that matches it. So these are called legs. And have you heard the term break a leg? That's what you say to an actor when you're wishing them good luck. It means literally Go out there and break the plane of this leg and enter the stage. So there you go, you learn something, break a leg. So another very important element of our backstage left space is this. All of these ropes and these ginormous weights right here, this is called the fly rail. Now, remember the fly tower that we talked about on stage? Right, do you think that the fly rail is related to the fly tower? Well, if you said yes, you'd be correct. Because this is how we move things from the fly tower to the stage and vice versa, okay? And sometimes the things that are up there in that fly tower weigh thousands of pounds, thousands of pounds. But little old me can move one of those very heavy things just by pulling on one of these ropes because they are balanced by these giant weights right here that are very, very heavy. So we call that a counterweight system. So if something is in balance with the counterweights, it's very easy to move. And that is your physics lesson for the day. <laughs> so hi everyone, this is Josh. He's our stage technician and he's going to demonstrate how the fly rail works. So what is the first thing you have to do, Josh? First you have to unlock it. Oh, so, that's good, that's safety. Yep, safety so it's first. just normally locked so it can't move. Yep. And then I unlock it yep. and I hold on to the ropes. Okay. Whatever I do on the front rope is what happens to the scenery or the legs or whatever out there. So if I pull down, it's going to come down. If I pull up, it's going to go up. That's a little hard to do. So a lot of times I reach behind and pull down on the oh. back rope. Oh. And then it'll move. And because they're balanced, it's very light and easy to move. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. And now we're going to go see where the actors rehearse and our students take classes. Follow me and Sydney. Welcome to the rehearsal studio. This is where the actors rehearse for their show or students take classes. Before an actor does a show, or even does a rehearsal, they have to warm up their bodies and their voices. So we're gonna do a quick warm up and I want you all to do this along with me and Sydney, all right? So let's just all stretch up to the sky and then I want you to touch your toes toward the ground and stretch 
stretch up to the sky and touch your toes and slowly roll up, roll up, roll up. And let's roll our shoulders backward and roll your shoulders forward. And now take gently, roll your head around and be gentle on your neck, okay? Can you go the other way? Don't roll too fast. We don't want your head to roll off your body <laughs> and out the door. Very good. Now just kind of shake and wiggle all over and get all the wiggles out. All right. That feel good? Yes. Get the wiggles out, Sydney? I did. Great. Okay. Now we have to warm up our voices. We're going to do a little kind of a tongue twister, and this is what we're going to say. Okay. The lips, the, the lips. teeth. The teeth. The tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the, the tip, tip of the tongue. tongue. Now, slowly, it's pretty easy, but we're going to be like a choo-choo train and try to go faster and faster and faster and faster. And I want you to try it with me and let's see how fast we can go without messing up. Are you ready? Ready, yes. Sydney? I'm ready. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. I did it. I did it. Sydney messed up. It's okay. We don't have to be perfect. But now our bodies are warm, and our faces and our voices are warm. Do you feel ready to go to to do some acting now? Yes, I do. Perfect. Are you guys ready to do some acting? Okay. Here's the thing about acting. It's all about pretend. We are going to pretend maybe to be someone else or to be doing something else and using our imagination. So this is what we're going to do, Sydney. Okay. Now, on this floor, there are no real stones or pebbles or rocks. Do you see any? No. No, but in your imagination, can you see one? Oh, yes. Great. Okay. Miss Sydney, yes. I want you to find a little tiny pebble. Can you find one? And you all find a pebble too. Uh, okay. Oh, I, I have mine. I got oh, one. Oh, what color is your city? Mine's pink. Mine is turquoise with sparkles. Blow on it. Just so it's, and maybe wipe it on your shirt. Is it nice and shiny now? Yes. Oh, it's so pretty. I want you to toss it up and catch it with the other hand. Ready? Did you catch it? <laughs> yes. Good, good, good. There's a pond behind us. Can we throw it into the water on the count of three? One, two, three, toss! Yay! Good job, that was great. Oh, we can handle a bigger thing, right? Oh, Let's yes. do a stone, like a big, not a boulder, but just a stone. Find a stone that's a, oh, I found one. Got it. Do you have it? Yes. It's a little bit heavier, isn't it? Yeah. Can you still hold it? Yes. Yes, can you all hold this stone? Very, very good. It's a little bit dirty, but it's gonna be hard to rub on our sleeves, so just kind of blow on it. Get the dirt, turn it over. Oh, this is really cool. Now, we're gonna to toss this in the air and catch it. We have to use both hands. Ready, one, two, three, toss, catch. Oh, God, let's do it one more time. Okay. One, two, three, toss, catch. Oh, all right, this is great. Now we have to be very careful. We don't wanna hurt anyone. We're gonna throw this in the, in the pond too, okay? okay? But we're gonna turn around and do it. Ready? And throw it more like a baseball. Ready? One, two, three, throw! Oh, that was a big splash. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who out there has big, strong muscles? Who's strong? I bet everybody is. Are you strong enough to do this? Yes. Because guess what? We're going to pick up a boulder. Ooh. A boulder is a huge, huge rock. Push up your sleeves. Gotcha. Put your hands together. Do a little pretend spit. <laughs> Rub those hands together. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, this boulder's big. Okay. Now lift with your legs, Sydney. We don't want to hurt our backs. Everybody, grab that boulder. And, oh, oh, make some noise. Get in. Oh, do you have it? Okay. Have it. Oh, we're strong. Ooh. We're so strong. We're going to put it over our heads on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. We got our boulders. Okay. Oh, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. Okay. Up. Oh. I don't think we can throw it in the pond. I think, oh, oh, I think we're just gonna drop it in front of us, but not on our toes. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh! Oh! Woo! That was great. Now, that big boulder, we're going to turn it 
into cotton, like a cotton ball. It's going to be so fluffy like a cloud. And we're going to say abracadabra and point at it, and it's going to turn into cotton. Ready? One, two, three. Abracadabra! Did it turn to cotton? Yes. Pick it up. Okay. Pick it up and blow it away. There we go. We just did some acting. Yay! We just played pretend. Yay! Yes! Very good. Can everyone take a bow? Thanks for coming, everybody. We hope you enjoyed today's tour. And we hope to see you at the theater very soon. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.